Though its two wars are officially over, the violence and the dying continues in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. As many as 5.5 million Congolese have died during almost 16 years of conflict in the Central African state. Rape has been a weapon of war since the beginning. A new UN estimate reports that as many as 15,000 women were raped in the DRC last year. Two new instances of mass rape were reported in late October, and both rebel militias and government soldiers have been implicated in the widespread use of sexual violence against civilians. The persisting violence in the DRC has been fueled by so-called conflict commodities, Colton, gold, tin, and copper, natural mineral riches that should have been a huge resource for the development of the DRC. Instead, they have been a curse. America Magazine spoke with Matilde Muhindu Mwamini, the director of the Center Alame in the Archdiocese of Bukavu in South Kivu. Her comments were translated by Alun Kamitatu, the regional technical advisor for extractive industries and governance for Catholic Relief Services, who also shared her thoughts on the state and future of the DRC. The two women were in New York as part of a Catholic Relief Services and Caritas Internationalis delegation to the United Nations. They were seeking a more effective international response to the ongoing suffering in the DRC. The Santo Alame is, is here to restore the dignity of uh, women. Uh, now there's a perception that Congolese women are raped women. And we are here to say that Congolese women are strong. Throughout the conflict, we've seen that women literally made miracles. Um, uh, they, they were the ones that uh, remained in the villages. Uh, when, when the husband fled uh, because of the conflict, they had to provide for the children. Uh, we've also seen uh, a new generation of traders that are traveling to Hong Kong, Dubai, or China um, to buy goods that they bring and sell in the Congo. They, and by doing this, they're providing jobs to other women. And, and that's why I think um, the people that are using uh, rape as a weapon of war knew um, the potential of uh, Congolese women. They understood that by targeting women, um, they would um, affect the whole community. And the center opened um, a listening center um, to help um, uh, provide counseling and help uh, women to be de-traumatized. And between 2002 and 2007, this center alone um, hosted 5,760 women, age women and girls from 8 to 75 years old. No, nobody was spared, and that's why we said this was um, a weapon of war. Mm -hmm. um, there was no question about the age, uh, be it young, uh, elderly, it didn't matter. I remember the témoignage de une des premières femmes qui avait accepté de témoigner. C'était une femme One qui était au-delà de ça. One of the first victims that was willing to actually explain what had happened to her. And what she was saying is that they were attacked uh, during, um, uh, during the night and um, her husband was, he was brutally beaten and, um, and she was raped. So the first soldier raped her and then the second and then the third. And when, as the fourth one was approaching, they heard the voice of a commander who told the soldier, leave her alone, she's an old woman. And so from that testimony, they understood that this was something that was planned, that there was an authority that was there that was watching and, and that was um, guiding all of this. What we are seeing is that uh, we still have uh, foreign um, uh, armed groups um, FDLR is in uh, South Kivu, uh, LRA is in North Kivu, um, and uh, exactions against civilians continue. And most of uh, these uh, clashes actually happen in um, mining areas. And what we uh, have observed is that um, mining every areas have, have become more and more militarized. Et donc voilà, nous, nous continuons le plaidoyer parce que nous ne sommes pas d'accord que and, ça soit um, toujours les femmes, we, les enfants. We, we continue the advocacy because we believe that if the Congolese government um, does what it's supposed to do and the international community which is now involved uh, also um, does what it's supposed to do, then um, the lives of uh, women and children um, will be spared. For me, there are two things. 
Um, the conflict continues because um, all the parties have the mean to continue fighting, and that's where minerals come in, um, are a, a critical factor. And also because there's no um, political will to address some of the broader issues that led to the conflict in the first part. If you look at, we're talking about the OLRA, we're talking about FDLR, is there um, uh, a regional uh, solution to the FDLR? Um, if we we able to disarm them, what do we do with them? Most of these groups um, occupy mining areas, and um, they use the uh, the revenues from um, the extraction and the sale of these minerals to buy weapons and to continue fighting. So unless we address that, they will keep fighting. What I would really like to see within the next ten years is a new generation of leaders. Even if we don't have all the roads and all the things, but if we have enough leaders out there that have a vision, be it for their city, for their province, and for the state, then we will be in good shape to have all the things that we dream of in the next 20 years. I think the, the failure uh, of the Congo um, and if you look at the, the Mobutu regime, and um, it has been the absence of you know leaders with a vision, and if if we have that, then slowly but surely we will get there.